Hey folks, we've been doing a pretty deep dive on different approaches to visualizing climate change data. A while back, I found this website at the Earth Observatory from NASA. I was really intrigued. Um, as you know, I love animations, but I was really intrigued by this plot looking at monthly temperature anomalies uh, between 1880 and 2016. Uh, our data previously and all the other uh, episodes we've been looking at is normalized between 1951 and 1980. This has been normalized between 1980 and 2015, a more recent normalization. What I want to do in this episode is recreate this figure. What I'd like to do is initially get this static version, but also see if we can push ourselves and get the GIF as well. Something that I've noticed is that if we plot our data that we've been working with, over the course of a year, it's basically a flat line with the average, again, from 1951 to 1980, right at zero. What we need, though, is additional information to tell us how NASA normalized the data by month. Basically, what happened when they normalized the data between 1951 and 1980 is that over those years, they look at the average for January, February, March, April, all the way to December, and then use that to calculate the average temperature difference for each month for every other year. So it's been done monthly. So we need to know what the adjustment factor is for each of the months. When I look down through uh, this page and looking at the variety of responses and comments, uh, this really got a lot of enthusiasm from the community, from people that I suspect want to be able to recreate the figures. One of the questions that came up from Robert, whoever Robert is, um, is the specific data table used available. So they've been working with the GIS temp data that we've also been working with. But Joshua Stevens, one of the authors, chimed in to say that the seasonal adjustments come from MERA too and can be found here. Mick Watson uh, also chimed in and said, you know, uh, the, the temperatures seem to be peaking at three degrees Celsius, not at two degrees Celsius. So again, what Joshua responded with was that there's a baseline change of about 0.7 degrees, 0.69 or so degrees, over the course of the year that accounts for that difference between three degrees and two degrees. So there's two additional bits of information that we need to bring on to our GISS data that we've been working with in previous episodes. Let's start by bringing in this mira 2 seasanomtext file. And so I'm gonna go ahead and fire that up. And so we get this text file, which I can save into our climate viz uh, data directory like this. And I'll go ahead and save that without touching anything. Now over here in our studio, uh, let's go ahead and open up that file in data meritus.seasanom.txt. Now, I don't like to manually edit the text files. I like to leave them as raw. And so I'm gonna leave this as raw. And so we see that there's three header lines here uh, that we don't, we don't want, right? So we'll need to account for that. So let's go ahead and it looks like it's perhaps a tab separated values file. So we'll do read TSV on data, and then again, that mera2, we can then do skip equals three. And it looks like it reads it in, but this is reading in as 12 rows and one column. And what this tells me is that these separators aren't tabs, but they're spaces. And so an alternative to read TSV that we could use is read table. We read that in, and sure enough, now we get our month, our season anomaly plus two standard deviations minus standard two deviations and the seasonal anomaly itself. So we see that we're getting a whole bunch of warning messages that it's expecting four, but there's actually five. Um, I think that's because if we look at our uh, text file, there is a space at the end of um, the data. And so that's basically telling read table, there should be another column, but read table only found four column names. I'm not gonna worry about that. You could probably get rid of that by specifying the actual column names and giving it five column names, but meh, I, I don't care. <laughs> right, so again, we have this read table. One problem is that our month is being read in as a character, and that's because we have the zero to make it a two character or two digit month. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify that. Um, I'll start by doing a select on lowercase month equals uppercase month. That'll, that'll change the name of the month. And then we'll also get C's anom. Very good. And now again, we want to modify that month by doing mutate month, and we can change that actually by using as.numeric. Uh, as.numeric will convert month into a number if it can, right? So if I put dog and then did as numeric on dog, it wouldn't like that. 
but if I do as numeric on 0, 1, it'll do its best to turn it into a number, and if it can, then it will represent it as a number. So sure enough, we now have month as a number, but I don't really want the number for the month, I want the month abbreviation. So again, I could do month equals month.abb square brace month. And again, as we've seen, month abb are the three character monthly abbreviations. It's a vector. I can then uh, get the month abbreviation for each number by indexing the number of the month that I had previously into that slot. And so now we see that we have our month and our seasonal anomalies, along with all those warning messages I'm just going to ignore. Right? So this I'm going to call my month uh, anom. And this is information that we'll store as we now read in our GISS data, which again is the normalized data between 1951 and 1980. So to get that, we've seen this before, we'll re do read TSV, uh, data forward slash uh, GLB, blah, 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 <laughs> who cares? Uh, for that, we need to do skip equals one, NA uh, is the three stars as we've seen, right? Um, and it's not a TSV. It's a CSV, right? And so again, we see that we get 143 rows in one column and that our column has all the things we want, but separated by commas. That's a sign that we used the wrong delimiter. We saw that, of course, when we were trying to re use read TSV instead of read table. So read CSV, and that's all good. And again, we want to select uh, the year, and I'll do lowercase year equals year, and then we want all of month.abb. And so conveniently, these column headings match uh, the values of month.abb. This, of course, then gives us our year and our 12 months. And now we can do a pivot longer. Um, on everything but the year, our names uh, will go to uh, uh, the month. And our values go to, uh, sometimes it's hard to talk and type, do you know? <laughs> uh, values to tdiff. Great. And then at the end of this, we can do slice tail n equals 10. And we see a bunch of NA values for the months that haven't happened yet, right? So I pulled these data down in April. It's now June as I'm recording this. I just haven't updated the file. Um, and so those are a bunch of NA values. So I can go ahead and get rid of those NA values by doing drop underscore NA. And again, if I do slice uh, tail n equals 10, we now see that we've gotten rid of all those NA values and we're off to the races. Now what I want to do is convert my month into a factor because for this plot, we're going to plot the months on the x-axis, and I want them in chronological order, not alphabetical order. By default, ggplot will convert that into alphabetical order unless we tell it otherwise. So I can do mutate month equals factor on month, and I'll set my levels to be month.abb. And so now when we look at our uh, data frame, we see that instead of it being a CHR character, it is now a factor. Now what I want to do is join in the monthly anomaly. So again, we'll do an inner join uh, with the data coming through the pipeline and month anom. Um, again, I don't need this period in my inner join statement. Um, R knows to take automatically what's coming through the pipeline and put it on the left side. I like to put it there just to be explicit for myself. I also like to say by equals month uh, to be explicit with myself what is coming through the pipe, right? And so now I have the monthly temperature difference and the seasonal anomaly, the monthly anomaly for that. And I can then go ahead and join that together. So I can do a mutate and I will then do month anom and I'll then say t diff plus c's anom giving me that column, which is the month anom column, which I can then use to generate those line plot. I'll go ahead and save this as a variable that I'll call tData. And now we're ready to use tData to generate a plot. So we'll do ggplot AES. On the x axis, I'm gonna put the month. On the y axis, I'm gonna put the month uh, anom. And then I'm gonna group by uh, the year. And then I'll do a geom line. And my plot is alphabetical, which is strange <laughs> because I thought I changed the order with this factor. And I think the problem is that I'm joining after I do all that, right? So if I look at T data, I bet this column went back to being a character. So to solve that, I can go ahead and bring that mutate back down. And you know what? I can actually join these two mutate statements together. 
Uh, and so the key thing is to put the factor creation after joining in the other month data. So this should work now. And if I look again at T data, I'll see that sure enough, month is back to being a factor. I generate the figure and voila, we basically have what they had over on uh, the NASA website. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and color my lines to match the average temperature of that year. So to get the temperature that we're going to map a color to, I need to create another variable. I could have done this using uh, the column, like the J through D column from the original data frame. But you know what? I think it'll be just as easy to calculate it on my own. Um, and so what I'll do here is a group by a year. And then I'll pipe that actually to a mutate rather than a summarize. Summarize would take each year and give me one row for each year. Mutate will create a new column and it'll repeat the same value for all months in there, right? So I can call this AVE then, and I can then do mean month anom. And then again, if we look at T data, we'll see that we've got this average column. I then need to ungroup it. Great. And so again, we have our T data and that again, has the average column built in. In my ggplot, I can then do color equals AVE. And now I see that I've got a color gradient for the average annual temperature, again, going from about negative a half up to one. I, of course, don't like that color scheme, and I am going to scale it from blue to red with white in the middle. We've seen this a number of times already, but we can do scale color gradient uh, two, and then we'll do low equals uh, dark blue, uh, mid equals white, which of course is the default, high equals dark red. Uh, I'll do midpoint equals zero. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that legend. So I'll do guide equals uh, none. Very good, so one small thing that I'm noticing uh, is what was raised by Mick Watson in the comments was that instead of kind of maxing out at two, it's maxing out at about 2.7. If we come back to the discussion, we'll see that again, for those 12 months, we have values ranging from one to 12. Um, we could do the same thing that we did with this mera2csanom.txt file. I'm perfectly happy to just kind of guesstimate this to be 0.7 on average. Um, I'm not really concerned about differences in the, in the hundredths place. So let's subtract 0.7 uh, that will then allow us to bring things down so that we're basically scaling between uh, 1980 and 2015. Again, we can come back here to this month anom and do minus 0 0.7. Now we see that our plot is more within that range that we saw from the website. One thing I see more clearly here is that the line uh, for 2022 is um, a dark purple, and that's because its average is based on three months, right? And so it's quite negative, making it uh, a darker blue. Let's start with modifying that 2022. So after this ungroup, I'll go ahead and do another mutate. We'll take AVE and I'll do an if else. So if else, the year is uh, 2022, so that's the current year, then I want the average value to be the maximum of the absolute value of uh, the AVE column, right? And so, because I want the darkest red um, to, again, to indicate uh, the year 2022, and I want that to be as dark as the darkest blue or the darkest red. But in this case, the darkest blue uh, is gonna be the darkest color, if hopefully that makes sense. And then out here, uh, alternatively, if it's not 2022, then we can use the, the regular AVE value without correcting for the most current year. And so now we can see that we do have that darker red line in there. Um, and so that looks pretty good. And that will be a pretty good indicator that that's for the year 2022. Now what I wanna do is turn our attention to getting our theming to look more like the web version. And of course we can do that with the theme function. And I wanna start by looking at the grid lines. So we'll do panel.grid.minor uh, uh, and we'll do element blank. Uh, and again, these grid lines between like zero and two are the minor grid lines. So that will get those to go away. And then panel.grid.major.x will be the grid lines across the x axis. And I want those to go away because the only grid lines that are here are in the original version rather are those horizontal grid lines. We've gotten rid of all those extra grid lines. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this 
and modify it to do element Y or major Y rather, and then element line. Um, I'll go ahead and do color equals gray uh, and then line type uh, to be dotted. And let's go ahead and do size equals 0 0.25. The default I'm pretty sure is 0.5. So let's look at it to be a bit thinner. So this is gonna be a gray grid line. The background is gray, of course. So I wanna kind of clear out the background. And so we'll do panel dot background equals element blank. That'll make it a nice white. So it'll be easier to see everything else. And so now we've got those grid lines. Of course, the original version had a grid line for negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. So we wanna go ahead and add that back in. I'm gonna put that up here with my scale color gradient two. And so I'll do scale Y continuous. And I will then do breaks equals um, and we'll do, uh, let's do uh, seek from uh, negative three to two by one and add that in. So now we have those grid lines for every unit. The original version didn't have um, X or Y axis labels. So again, we could do labs X equals null, Y equals null, but it did have a title and a subtitle. So we can add that in. So we'll do title. And again, the original was temperature anomaly degree C. So we'll do temperature anomaly. Uh, and then it's the Unicode is U00B0C. I've been typing that in so many times, I think I have it memorized. Uh, close parentheses. And then we have subtitle equals something. And that is difference from 1980 to 2015 annual mean. 1980 to 2015 annual mean. And that was all in parentheses. So I need a closing parentheses. Also, we, we've seen this before in previous episodes, but the, the title and the subtitle are aligned on the Y axis. Uh, I'd rather it be aligned on the plot. It's, so basically it's by default aligned on the panel, not the plot. So we can fix that very easily. Plot.title.position equals plot. Very good, that brings it over to the left. We can also change the formatting. Uh, let's make the title uh, bold. And so we'll do element text uh, font or face equals bold. And then we'll make our plot dot subtitle element text and we'll do color equals gray. So we'll shrink the size a little bit and do size equals 10. So I think we've got it pretty close. So I'm gonna go ahead and save it now to a PNG in the right dimensions to make sure everything is positioned right and kind of looks the right size. We can do that with GG save. Uh, and we'll we'll do uh, figures forward slash monthly anomaly dot PNG. And then my width, um, I'll make six. My height, I'll make four. My units will be inches. Good, I, I think those sizes actually work really well. One thing I've noticed is that we have expansion on for the X axis. We need to remove that because in the original version, there was no space between the Y axis in January or December and, and the right side. So again, we can come back to scale X continuous and add it in actually. So we can do scale X continuous and we'll do expand uh, zero, zero. Uh, and it's complaining because I used scale X continuous rather than discrete because X is being represented, it's representing a factor, which is discrete, right? So we can do discrete. And now we see that we, um, we've removed that space, but at the same time, we've kind of chopped off part of the December. And so what I'd like to do then is add in a margin for our figure. And so we can do that by coming in here and we can do plot.margin and we'll give it the margin function. And I the, the arguments are TRBL, trouble, right? And so the top, I'm gonna to give it 10 uh, points. The right, let's give 10. The bottom, 10 and left uh, 10. And if those aren't right, as always, we can adjust. And that actually works pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that spacing. Maybe uh, the December, we could give a little bit more space. And so on the right, we could open that up to like 15. Yeah, and I think that looks pretty good. I'd also like to put an annotation on here for our 2022 line. The original went to 2016 in August. And so I think it's that point there. Um, I'd like to put a circle on this as well as a label. So again, we've got our T data data frame. And so I'm gonna make another data frame that just has the last 
date, the last month, right? And so for this, what we could then do would be to say uh, slice tail n equals one. Again, that gives us that final row. I'm gonna call this annotation. We've got that data frame. And then what we could do is to add to our geom line, geom point, uh, data equals annotation. So our X will be month, our Y will be month anom. Let's go ahead and add that in. So that gives us a red circle. Uh, let's make it bigger. Uh, <laughs> I like to have the big juicy point there so it's easy to see where it is. Let's do size equals five. Uh, let's now put a text next to it so it's clear what that actually represents. Again, we can come back up um, to our geom point. And after that, we could do geom text. Uh, and we could do, again do data equals annotation, AES, X equals month, Y equals uh, month anom. And then we could then do um, what? We could do label equals, uh, let's do March 2022, add that on. And so that's centered right on the point. And so that's center justified vertically or horizontally. We could, um, I find it's easier to not be center justified, but to rather be uh, left or right justified. So I'm gonna go ahead in this case and make it right justified. So we can do H just equals one. And so we lose the, the final two in 22. So maybe we'll go ahead and forego algorithmically setting it, but perhaps we could go ahead and set it to the left and right a little bit um, using actual numbers. And so the, um, the X is currently three, maybe we could do like 2.8 and our Y uh, is at negative like 0.8. Maybe we could make it like negative 0.5. And I think that looks like pretty good placement, right? Again, it's analogous to what we saw in the original where they had a label up here for August of 2016. I'll let you see if you can't figure out the filter statement and the repositioning of the points and all the other stuff to make that original plot. Uh, I'm here in March of 2022. And again, if you're watching this in the future, uh, by all means, I'd love for you to do this with uh, the data for whenever you're watching this, right? 2023, 2025, who knows, right? So I think this does a really nice job of creating the static screen of that GIF. Um, hopefully you agree. What I'd like to do now is very quickly show you how we can actually create that GIF. I am going to break up my plot because there's a lot that's in common between the final screen as well as the rest of the GIF, right? And so I'm gonna call this whole plot P, right? And so then, you know, I can then say P um, and then go to GG save and it'll save it as that final version. But what I need to pull out is this geom point and the geom text, right? That's the unique thing that's different from what we had in the GIF. So then I can add that uh, to P to get that. And I forgot to remove the plus sign at the end of the geom text. So it's trying to add GG save on. So I get that error message. Let's go ahead and run this again. And of course, everything looks like it did before. Of course, if I just ran P now at the prompt, what I see is the plot without the labels, right? Okay, so now what we wanna do is build the animation. And so for the animation, what we can do is P plus uh, transition uh, reveal and uh, we'll reveal over the year. Ah, and I forgot to load GG Animate. So I'll come back up here and do library GG Animate. And now we can do the transition reveal without any error messages. So we're getting the GIF, but of course we don't have the label for the year. So to this, we need to go ahead and add a geom label. And at the X axis, it's right over July. So that'll be seven. And on the Y axis, let's go ahead and put that at zero and our label will be the year. Um, and we've seen this before, but we want a white background, but we don't want the border, right? And so we'll do lab, um, label dot size equals zero. And you know what? I think this part uh, needs to be an AES, so the X, Y, and label. Uh, so let's see what this looks like without adding the transition reveal. And again, I think that looks pretty good. One thing I might do is to make that bold. And so what we could then do is font face equals bold. Great, and now we can add on the transition reveal. And so what we see is the animated lines, but unfortunately we see what we saw earlier when we were making the climate spirals is that the year 
is not increasing smoothly, right? It got from 1880 to 1888, but then it sits here for a while before jumping up to the 1970s. And so what we saw before we could do to deal with that problem is instead of transition reveal to do transition manual and we'll again do year, but uh, transition manual will show a new line and then hide the other lines. So if we want to keep all the other lines, then we need to do cumulative equals true. So that seems to have done the trick. Um, now, if we want to output this, I'm going to go ahead and save this as another plot, A. So we'll do animate A, and then our width, uh, I'll set to be 6, our height to be 4, a unit equals inches, and then res equals 300. I'll also then save this as a GIF to anim save, uh, and I'll save that then uh, as figures monthly anomaly.gif, not PNG. Yeah, and so this will take a little bit of time to go ahead and render and generate. I won't make you sit around and uh, wait for that. It'll basically be the same thing that we had here. Of course, if you want to see all of the output, all of the code that I generated today, um, you can download it at the link down below in the description. You'll find a blog post that will give you all the instructions you need to get going. So I really hope that you do follow along in running this. Again, I pursued this visualization because as I was looking around for data visualizations of climate change, I thought this one looked really interesting. If you find others out there in the wild that you would love for me to take a crack at and show you how to do, please let me know. I can't possibly see all the things that are out there. I've got a few more things in the queue, but I'd love to get your thoughts on visualizations that you think would be really fun to recreate. Even though these skills are being applied to thinking about climate change, I know they can be applied to the work that you are doing to visualize your own data. Well, keep practicing, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.